General lady yields back. The gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Ogles, is now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ma'am, thank you for being here all day. I apologize for the disruption with votes, but that's, I guess, part of the gig on both our parts, right? Are for the course. Um, you know, when I think about, obviously, we're here to talk about housing, uh, which obviously is, there's a cor correlation with the economy. And I think about the challenges facing our economy as a whole, whether it's inflationary pressures, which have impacted rents and affordability for that new home buyer in particular, uh, immigration, as we've seen, and what it's done to economies across the country, and then just in general, the spending uh, in the economy as a whole. Uh, my, my colleagues have touched on this a little bit, but, but I'd like to continue with the topic is, has it, the illegal immigration surge, and we have record numbers uh, coming across the border, whether, whether you agree or disagree with that, doesn't matter, that's really not the purpose of this hearing, but has the surge of individuals coming into this country had an impact or, or, or plagued the housing market at all from your perspective? I'm sure that in certain communities, absolutely it has. Yes, ma'am. Well, specifically, the Biden administration's American Rescue Plan added $5 billion in additional emergency housing vouchers to the $80 billion Congress had previously allocated in prior COVID relief legislation. HUD changed the program participation requirements so that illegal aliens could receive HUD vouchers that can be used to subsidize rent and forestall foreclosures. Is allowing illegal aliens to use federal housing vouchers uh, really going to fix the housing crisis for Americans? First off, that is not true. It is not accurate. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll follow up on that in writing uh, and look for a response uh, in the coming days, if that would be sufficient. That's fine. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, you know, I, I would argue that as we look at, uh, you know, take Nashville, for example, that between 2019 and 2022, the number of people that became homeless for the first time uh, increased by 75%, according to the Metro Homeless Impact Division, their data. Um, if there's a prior, you know, is, are you seeing or do you feel that your agency under your watch is prior, prioritizing illegals over Americans? We do not. If we can point out where that's happening, what are you going to do about it? If it is happening, we're going to do what is necessary to follow the law, which specifically says that we cannot do it. All right, very good. So your own record saying that the law states illegals cannot get said vouchers. It doesn't say it that exact way, but it does say that we this cannot serve. All right, serve. sure, yes. paraphrasing. Uh, and then you are committed to correcting it if we find that that is the case. Yes. I appreciate that. So I want to jump topics. Um, so the GSC is, again, more of a treasury issue, um, but do you think the conservatorship of the GSEs has had an impact on the availability or pricing uh, of, the, of the market, if you will, and its impact on rents and mortgages? Well, no, I really can't speak that much to, because I don't spend a lot of time um, evaluating what the GSEs are doing, but I do not believe so. Yes, ma'am. Well, if the GSEs were privatized, uh, and they had access to more private capital, which they then could in turn lend, uh, would that not be part of the solution? Not a silver bullet, but a part of the solution in fix fixing the housing crisis as we look forward to the economy. I would say that since Congress is who actually created the GSEs, it should be Congress to make that decision, not me. Well, so I'm not asking you to make a decision as secretary, uh, who is someone who's looking and analyzing the data on the housing market, what I've su suggested or asked is if Congress were to take said action and you were to see an increase in privatization with the GSEs, more available capital on the market, I think I'll quote loosely my colleague Torres. He said, you know, part of the solution for the crisis is more homes. So if you have the GSEs providing capital into the market, would that not be part of the solution? The, the GSEs right now have about $6 trillion. They have plenty to put resources into the market. Well, the, I think the, the ability when they're privatized and the nimbleness and the nature of who and when they can loan become changes. I don't know that much about how the GSEs operate. I'm just saying to you that there are resources there now for them to do the lending that we need to have done. Yes, ma'am. And so if we find impediments, again, uh, with the GSCs as it relates to HUD, and there's a correlation there, uh, we will certainly reach out, and I appreciate your time. That'd be great. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. We have now uh, concluded.
uh, with all of our members. I would like to ask unanimous consent to enter into the record the HUD OIG Priority Open Recommendations Report for fiscal year 24 from January 2024 and note the item on page six, quote, improvements are needed.